Now it's my pleasure to welcome our first panelists. So we have the first panel, Fostering Girls' Participation in the Tech Sector. It's never too early to start. And it's my pleasure to welcome Isabel Collet. Welcome, Isabel, University of Geneva. <laughs> Karima Boudouat, uh, University Côte d'Azur. <laughs> Barbara Binova, Masaryk University. And we have, last but not least, Marta Musilova from the Office of the Czech Government. So, I am really happy that we have these four experts, really experts on the issue. And uh, not to forget anything about your background, can you please start very briefly introducing yourself, uh, what you are doing now and what's your background. And I would like to start with Isabel, if you don't mind, as the with the foreign speakers, the, and the technicians told me that we should really hold our microphone to our mouth so everybody can hear it. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be in Prague. It's the first time for me. So I am Isabel Collet. I am from the University of Geneva. I am a professor in education, but I, I am a former computer scientist. And I was working from 20 years about women in IT. I participate in different projects in, with the European Council about encouraging women in IT for, I say, 20 years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Karima, please. Thank you. Uh, so I'm very happy. I'm also very happy to be here. And it's also the first time for me being in Prague. Um, so, I come from France, from Université Côte d'Azur. I'm associate professor there. Uh, my expertise area is cybersecurity and privacy management, and more precisely, human-centric cybersecurity, security, and privacy management. And I'm part of the uh, French association called Femmes et Sciences, which is Women and Science Association, since 10 years now. Uh, and I also, I'm also today representing this association and also part of uh, um, an European cost action called UGEN. Bara will talk about it. She's the vice chair of this cost action, uh, which is dealing also with the gender in informatics. And that's it for me. Excellent. And thank you for the invitation too. You're yeah. more than welcome. So we will uh, go to uh, Marta. So Marta uh, good please. afternoon, everyone. So I'm the only one who's here for the, from the state sector. I work at the Office of the Government of the Czech Republic at the Gender Equality Department and my area of work is education, uh, innovation, science and statistics uh, and I'm the co-author of the uh, chapter knowledge in the gender equality strategy for, from for the years 2021 till uh, 2030 which you can actually find on the table back there it's both in Czech and English it's the summary version it's a short readable version we have also the long boring one but that's online only thank you very much and we go to Barbara please uh, first of all thank you very much for the invitation it's great to be here um, so I think I can be bringing insights from three directions. Uh, one is uh, me being in academia, um, uh, being a professor of computer science, uh, with very few professors uh, being uh, women uh, around me. Uh, the, the second uh, is being a co-founder of Chiquitas, uh, the organization that has been mentioned uh, that is trying to open the door of technology uh, for women in the Czech Republic and inspire countries beyond uh, Czech Republic. And the third one is the EU Gain framework that uh, Karima mentioned, uh, because we are both involved in it. Uh, it's a framework of 40 European countries uh, sharing their knowledge and expertise on the topic how to actually address uh, the gender imbalance in computer science across Europe. Thank you very much. Uh we have two panels, as, as, as you know, and we will try to concentrate in this first panel more on education, research, careers, since the, the second one is more focused on, on business. But just, just we will try to do it. We can tackle some business issues as well, but we should, we should stay in uh, education and, and research, research area, universities, faculties, uh, mostly. So we discussed with, uh, with the ladies here that we can go and have three questions, which we should 
we should discuss and then we will open the floor for your comments and questions as well. So the first one which we wanted to, we, we know that we have heard that the situation is actually is not the best <laughs> in technical sciences in IT. Uh, we have heard some examples why it is not good. So how do you see based on your research, based on your knowledge, the situation in the area. So I would like to start with Isabel. Thank you. Uh, first, we have to remember that IT was not a particularly male topic at the beginning. The first program was written by a woman, Ada Lovelace. It was at the, in the middle of the 19th century. She, she invented uh, um, some topic important for programmation. And then we have, Adalo, um, after Ada Lovelace, we have also, for example, Grace Hopper, who invented compilation and the COBOL language, which is a very important language for business. And in the 50s, in the 80s, till the 80s, programming was quite female. And when you, you think to the world, I mean, hardware and software, they are gendered and it's not by chance. They are gendered because the field were gendered. In hardware, we have the, the men, it was engineering. And in software, we had underqualified and underpaid women because we consider that software was not very important. Grace Hopper said that software will soon be more important than hardware. She was right, but she was not believed. But in fact, that's what we see today. Uh, in France, till the 80s, uh, engineering was the most feminized field in the engineering school, uh, the second most feminized, and today it was one of the last. So something happened in the 80s. Uh, two things happened. First, IT became a very important topic for the industry, for the business, and we have good careers, we have large incomes, it was a very good job for a boy. So we in invited boys to join the IT crowd, if I can say it like that, and not uh, the women. And then we also have the, um, uh, the, the personal computer appears in the family. Of course, not in all family because it was expensive, but with a personal computer, create the image of the geek. Young boys strongly involved with computer, uh, afraid of women, not going out, but very skilled with a keyboard. And this creates, in the imagination of teachers, of parents, of teenagers, a new image of what is the good way for being a computer scientist. Before, uh, computer science was seen as a tertiary uh, work in bank or administration, so suitable for women, better than industry, for example, or nuclear physics. But with the DIC and with um, the importance of IT, it's seen uh, IT become a, 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 good, um, a good field for boys with a career and also linked to mathematics, linked to logic. Of course, it's the same IT than before, but remember it's mathematics and logic. We're supposed to be male topics and uh, women, of course, are supposed to be more sensitive, more linked to people, and IT was supposed not uh, linked to people. So at, in the 80s, the number of women dropped dramatically, and we are now more or less at 15, 20%, it depends what we count. But we have to remember it is a Western problem, because if you go in North Africa, if you go in Southeast Asia, we absolutely don't have the same situation and the same percentage. The perception of the IT is different, the stereotypes are different. IT is a good job for women, for example, in Asia, because you can work from home, you can work while you keep your children at home or take care of the elder. So it's a very good job for uh, modern women. Of course, this is not the, the, um, the argument I want to use to attract women in IT, but it's just to say that the way we consider IT here, it's very local, it's just for the Western. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, uh, Karima. I will just jump to what uh, Isabel just said. Um, yeah, it's very, very good that you pointed out that there is a difference 
with other parts of, of the world and other countries. And I can confirm this at least in Algeria because I'm coming from Algeria. So in, uh, in Algeria, when I started my studies and I, I finished my studies in 1992 when I obtained my engineering degree in informatics. And at that time, I didn't see or feel that there was a difference between the number of male student or female student. And it was the same situation at my engineering school, but also at the universities in Algeria, in, at least in tech domain. But then when I arrived in France in November 1992, I was really surprised by the few number of women who were uh, doing the, the master, because I started the master at that time. And I think all the girls who were there were from North Af Africa. Uh, so this confirms just that what, what Isabel is saying. And if you go back to the, to the numbers, uh, until 2017, for example, in Algeria, we had like uh, around 49% of women graduated from ICT domain and working in this area, uh, whereas they, are, they represent only 18% percent of the workforce in Algeria. And we have similar numbers in, in Tunisia and Morocco. Tunisia, I think, 55 percent of women. And in Morocco, 41 percent of women um, and representing 26 percent of the workforce. But if you go to, back to the situation in France, I mean, the situation is really different. Um, and if you take the numbers uh, provided by the report, the gender scan report, we have, like I think, 23 percent of girls choosing informatics specialties and studies. And um, only 70% of student, of uh, female students are graduated in ICT. But then um, since 2019, the situation became worse in France. Um, I would just give the, the, I would just explain this. So we had a reform in September 2019 uh, in the curriculum of high schools. And in this curriculum, mathematics have been removed uh, from the core curriculum and it became uh, an option instead of, be of being a mandatory. And we have seen uh, after that, that the, uh, the number of girls choosing informatics dropped down to 13%. So we had 23%, it dropped down to 30% in 2020. And now in 2021, we had similar numbers, 13.7%. So this is the situation uh, um, now in France. But I would like to finish anyway with the, a positive note, uh, just to say that mathematics will be back in the core curriculum in next September for all the students who will not follow uh, uh, mathematics studies as speciality. And also um, the, um, the French foundation called Femme at Numérique, um, Women at Digital, they said that um, actually uh, at, we, th they saw that the number of women increased by 7% in ICT domain since uh, from 20, 19 and 2022, even if the number of female students decreased by 2% from 2013 until 2019. So I think we can stay optimist. And yeah. Thank that you very me. much. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, Marta, what, uh, what is your view? What is the situation in the Czech Republic? Are we closer to France or closer to, let's say, Algeria or Africa? In well, that respect, in this issue, what I mean. Um, well, we do have, <laughs> that, that's, that's a tricky question. Uh, I, I'd rather not answer that, but we do have less uh, ICT graduates than Nigeria, to be honest. We do have only 14.2% uh, if we are talking in the numbers by she figures by European Commission, because I think the numbers, the French embassy might have been different than I have. So we might be using different years or this is the she figures 20. 21. Uh, but I wanted to follow with the mathematics, because uh, in Czechia we do have still mathematics in the curriculum. And there is a PISA survey which is done every few years. Uh, the latest one is PISA 2018, which is an international survey which uh, covers educational uh, education in 15-year-olds. Uh, and it's a survey, they do uh, gr um, tests 
in, in mathematics, in, uh, in readings, and also a survey how they see themselves in a couple of years. And uh, for mathematics, girls and boys, there is no difference. In the, in the terms of reading, there is some, but it's, uh, it's getting smaller, uh, this difference. But what is interesting, in this survey, they also ask, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself? And only 1% of 15-year-old girls, they see themselves in ICT in comparison to 8% of boys, which is quite different. If, if, but uh, wh what's happening? Why is 15-year-olds? Because uh, when we look back uh, when they were younger, the girls, they were more motivated to be in the ICT. They were more into the tech. But as they get older and now they are supposed to choose their career, suddenly they are stepping back from the ICT. Like one, uh, why is this happening? There was uh, one research and uh, actually even now, well, this research is a few years old, but it's not old, old. It's a couple of years. And actually the families of the, like with the girls and the boys together, they look at the, their careers, like what do you want to do? And is this okay for you to have kids with? And for boys, what do you want to do? And is this paid enough for you? So therefore, the girls, they won't choose ICT because uh, most of, you were talking about the platform working actually. And uh, it seems like we found the savior, but in terms of platform working, it's not a savior we need to, because it's, it's usually not controlled enough. There's a lot of insecurities when it, within the platform working. And if we, still put the burden on the taking care of the kids on the women and this is happening that's uh, all the stereotype we live in and also in Czechia we don't have enough uh, childcare places so uh, so it's very hard to be mother and uh, work together because usually the women are paid less than men so uh, the families if they want to do the choice who stays at home with kid it's uh, usually the woman and uh, that's one uh, one thing why is this happening and also uh, one another research found out that uh, it's uh, connected with the stereotypes that uh, being a computer geek it's uh, it's uh, considered to be manly or in you know uh, masculine in comparison to being a girl who understands the computers. I think this is uh, s slowly changing this narrative also within the media because when you watch TV, you see a lot of it's getting better the representation of women in tech and it's something we see a lot nowadays. Uh, for example, Netflix has, uh, I think uh, their whole production, it's uh, based on, uh, it's very gender, anti stereotypical I think they put money in, in that. And I think I'm talking a lot and I should pass uh, to Vara. No problem. I, I am glad you mentioned that it's not easy to be a mother. I have to admit that I tried to be on paternity leave. I did paternity leave. I was happy to do so. But I can tell you it's not easy to be a father either. I mean, I was also <laughs> exhausted. So I, I I even cannot imagine what it's to be a mother. So I completely agree I with you. And I also a bit tried, a bit, just well, a bit. I think it should be what uh, it needs to be, what it's to being parent. Yes. Laura. Uh, uh, if I should think about like where I see the glass ceiling for like little girls, uh, basically opting out uh, from this direction, I would say that is the thing that as a society, we are socializing girls for perfection and boys for bravery. Because essentially, like when you look at a coding assignment, it's a, it's a bravery task. It's about like failing and trying again, and failing and trying again, and failing and trying again. What we often see with little girls is that if they don't get it right the first try, they will believe that there is something wrong with them and it will be very hard for them to try again. It's really the way how society like talks to little girls that is creating this glass ceiling for themselves to then like opt away. Uh, 
it's called the confidence gap. Uh, it has been uh, named uh, earlier. Um, uh, it is a research that looks at the grades of girls, for example, in mathematics, and then asks them, like, how would you self self assess yourself? Like, how good you are in mathematics? And there is real like gendered gap where the girls will say, I'm not that good, even if their grades are better than of their friends uh, who are boys. Uh, we did a study where we are uh, trying to understand these like different things that lead to a concept called leaky pipeline. So how we are actually losing girls. We identified like five milestones in lives of girls uh, where we are losing them basically. The first one is access to encouragement when they are little. So basically they told us like I didn't even consider it. It didn't cross my mind. Uh, nobody encouraged me to even consider that direction. The second is stereotypes of the mostly mothers who want to protect them from going in the wrong direction. So it's not really with the attempt to uh, steer them in the wrong direction, but like really the close family wanting the best for the little girl. And if their mother can't really imagine a future, like a success for her little girl in computing, she will better navigate her towards fields like economics where she can imagine her little girl being successful. The number three is the confidence gap we just talked about. Number four is a sense of belonging, really like ending up in an environment where I don't really feel I can show my real talents to my environment. And number five is feeling valued for what my talents really are. And that is actually really sad because we see that Girls indeed bring really non-stereotypical talents to the table if they show their talents. Because most of the time, girls who are in technology keep their talents hidden from their colleagues. And that is why they might get frustrated and then not lead to the leadership roles. Uh, because like feeling that maybe the fact that I would like to like work more cross-disciplinary will be seen as a second class by my colleagues. So maybe opening up, seeing more talent in the people, seeing more, so seeing more value in the differences we can bring would actually open up technology to more girls. Thank you very much. All these answers were, I mean, fantastic. It's, it, it's, it's a fantastic lesson for me as well as I also for the others. Uh, also, uh, the second question, the second answer I would like to do now, uh, Tilman Becker also mentioned why it's diversity in the IT field so important. Do you have some other uh, like examples and other reasons and facts why it's really important to keep that diversity, that the girls are more involved in IT, more in technologies, because otherwise we might have some, some consequences which are not good for, for ourselves as, as a whole. Uh, first, I would like to precise something. I didn't speak about platform workers. I spoke about theoretical uh, uh, computer science, because the more it's theoretical, the less you need to go out. So it's theoretical IT, which is particularly considered as a female topic, which is quite uh, astounding for us, because we used to say, if it's very logical, theoretical, women don't like because they like con um, natural things. No, it's absolutely why, what, it's absolutely something we don't believe here, and of course, it's no, it nothing about nature, it's everything about culture. So, uh, I meant uh, oh. when you were talking about the Asia, yes. there was theoretical. Uh, theoretical oh, IT. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not platform. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, good for everyone to hear that platform, it's not the savior yes, as we uh, all uh, tend to uh, think uh, sometimes. Um, so, to, to answer the question, first, of course, IT is understaffed. So, we need people to work in IT. And sometimes I was wondering if we find a cat who can code, I prob probably the industry will hire it. Um, so why not women? But it is, we have to remember that first it's a question of social justice. We have a job, very interesting, 
uh, well paid with career and half of the population are cast out. So it is first a question of social justice. Then, as you said, uh, PISA proved it is not a question of skills, it's a question of expectancy. So there are no good reason to cast out women because they have the skill. So for, for the high, higher education, for the engineering school, and then for the job market, it's a waste of talent, of course. But there is another uh, a reason that why women don't go to IT. There is a constant um, social, um, uh, social censorship who explain the women they don't belong, as you said. And then what happened? Bah, what happened is the technology can be inclusive if it's conceived, developed, installed, uh, invented only by men. Uh, for example, this chair was probably conceived by a man because it's too large for me. <laughs> like my phone, <laughs> it's the same problem. My phone is too large for my hand and it's not um, by chance it's too large. It's because it's, uh, it's designed to be fit for a man's hand. So for me, it's too big. And it's one of the multiple examples. For example, when the, the application for health appear on the phone, they monitor everything, uh, heartbeat, blood pressure, steps, but not periods. And uh, menstruation periods, it's something quite important for half of the user of the phone, but none <laughs> of the developers. And it's very easy to monitor. <laughs> but of course, they, they didn't think, they, probably they don't want to exclude anyone, but you know, it's the high tech, the technology for I. And if I am a man, I don't think about period. Uh, we have many examples, for example, um, uh, voice, uh, with, um, when you speak to an, uh, an artificial intelligence, if you're a man, your voice can be easily, more easily recognized than if you're a man. Because AI was trained with more male voices than female voices. So it's easier to recognize a male voice than a female voice. So you can say, we just need to fix the data set. If we put more uh, equal men and female voice, soon the AI will recognize as well men and female. Unfortunately, we have 10 or 50 years of algorithm uh, improved, which are improved uh, uh, on male and low voice. So even if you fix the data set, it's still more difficult for AI to recognize a female, a high voice than a low voice. So there are many examples which prove that IT is designed for the people who design the IT. So if you want an IT inclusive, we have to have more diversity uh, between, uh, inside the computer team. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you for the example, Isabel. So I just would like to emphasize on these uh, biases uh, um, algorithms. So uh, I would just stay with the, the, the example of the, the phone. If you take the facial recognition, for example, we have seen that actually the, the facial recognition programs have difficulties to recognize women faces. And, and also, if uh, we take the, some AI programs, because I would, really would like to emphasize on these uh, biases in AI, um, there are two, uh, at least for me, interesting examples for, uh, for the for job markets. For example, um, in 2014, Amazon has uh, developed a program for internal job recruitment. And after using it um, d during one year, they have, um, see that actually the program didn't really like women and was uh, really, how we say, discriminating them. And, um, and there is another, uh, and after, and I think in, in 2017, they have decided to stop using it. And there is another interesting example uh, related to job advertising. So I think three or four years ago, um, they, they have, um, there was a job advertising uh, used by LinkedIn and Facebook, and it, have been, it has been proved that 
this job advertising advertisement was advertising only i mean the um, the uh, job with high responsibilities for for men mainly for men and not true and not really for for women so i think yeah isabel you are right yeah, it is important i mean to to i mean to to take into account gender balance particularly for training data set but also having like uh, gender balance in the developer teams and like having l women also involved and um, uh, as men because developing the application is really important to have also the women point of view and women expertise and knowledge and and again um, I think it's also really important to have the gender balance otherwise we will miss like 50 percent of um, of expertise uh, of women talent and also um, just to, to, to point out also this, if we don't push girls to tech studies, I mean, a lot of women will not find jobs in near future because many of the jobs today need tech expertise. And to finish with numbers, because I like numbers, in France, 93% um, of uh, high school students and 97% of parents think that it's really important to encourage diversity in tech domains. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay, Marta. Thank you. I will also uh, add to the AI because uh, if we, if the male developers, we, uh, if the developers are mostly men, then we put, uh, we foster inequalities and we are taking them and putting them in the AI. For example, if you think about the names of our AIs, it's Alexa, it's Siri, it's Cortana. All these uh, are, are females. Well, now we have Google Bart, uh, which is uh, one of these men, but we think as, uh, as AI, as, as our servants, uh, so which are mostly in many cultures, women are the ones who are serving so that's why we give ai's the names and also i don't know how is it in your languages but if you try to uh, use the chat uh, gpt and in czech uh, chat gpt uh, she talks as she or he yeah it's like i i i hadn't asked it uh, about its gender but uh, it's it has the she uh, she talks about itself as a she. Uh, so that was uh, on, on top of this, but why do we also need the diversity? It's uh, because I'm from the state, so I need to have this uh, from the same point of view, because uh, state and the EU, uh, we do uh, fund research and innovation. And this is funded by the people, even though by the taxes. And therefore, if uh, the states or the EU or different uh, public bodies are giving the money uh, to, the, to the companies, uh, we need that this research is good for everyone, not for a certain group. And if we don't have diverse group, then we don't have diverse experiences. As Isabel was talking, for example, about the menstruational uh, application. So that's why we also need the diverse team. And also uh, in terms of uh, business and like, uh, um, not business business, but uh, creating money and profit also for the, for the state. Uh, there has been research that there is a relation between European Innovation Scoreboard, uh, the excellence index in, uh, that's index in science and the gender equality index. So basically, it's not a coral. It's a, it's it's not causal. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. Uh, uh, but there is a correlation between these three. So if we have higher gender equality index, we have a higher uh, innovation scoreboard, and that's good for every country, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Bara. Uh, I will put a different spin uh, on the question uh, because I think that as as long as we will see it primarily as a social justice issue, uh, the people in power will not listen uh, because uh, 
this in a sense labels women as the weaker members that we want to also include in the game of the of the stronger ones and that's not really the picture that is uh, matching the truth uh, there has been studies one of them is the famous 2015 McKinsey study and it has been it has been repeated a couple of times looking at the performance of the fortune 500 companies and looking at the correlation of the leaders and their diversity and concluding consistently that the more diverse teams perform better. So women in tech teams make the whole company stronger. And that has been uh, continuously said. It has been shown also in repeated experiments. So there has been the Great British experiment where they are trying to replicate this in the, like a lab setting, taking people, uh, putting them in different like diverse and non-diverse setups and giving them different tasks and trying to study actually what's behind that correlation. The conclusion was that uh, diverse teams are more creative. And not only that, like uh, the thing about the diverse team and one important thing is that uh, you basically eliminate uh, the uh, the bias called uh, the um, uh, when when people agree too fast, it's often agreeing on not the optimal solution. Uh, it's the confirmation bias. It's basically many people when they think about the diverse team, they think like this will be nightmare because these people will keep discussing for ages before they reach a conclusion. And I say, and that's the benefit of a diverse team, because not only they will reach towards a better conclusion, but even those who maybe knew the direction right from the start will polish their thinking to convince those who didn't see that this is the best way to go. So uh, we always actually reach a better conclusion if it takes longer. And like, so uh, if people ask me like, do we need to have diversity in like all the offices and all the teams? I said, if a decision is made at that office then yes if not if like people people want to work in an environment where they feel comfortable and just remember one important thing like our brain acts as a survival organ so our brain will try to convince us that homogeneous environment is better for us because it doesn't need to be so alert when being surrounded by people who are very alike and so uh this has been also, the Daniel Kamen, who has written the Thinking Fast and Slow book, uh, received the Nobel Prize for Behavioral Economy for this like very like uh, way of uh, showing that while in the behavioral economy we had the thinking that we consider the facts and then make a rational decision, what is actually happening in our brains is that we first spontaneously make a decision. For example, I like this person more. And then we find rational reasons for that. And we are very smart. So we can find the reasons why like homogeneous environment is better, why it's, it's achieving better results, etc. Because our brain is wired that way. It's trying to navigate us towards an environment where people are very alike because it doesn't need to work so hard in protecting us in that environment. So research shows that diversity brings us to better performance. Uh, but we still need time to actually see those success cases in our proximity to start believing it. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It was really another perspective for how a very interesting point of view. Very interesting. Now we go to the third question and we will also ask uh, the, the audience to come in and ask the point of view. So the third one, and I would like to, to be brief now, is in education, in in research careers in universities what is your suggestion which should be done nowadays because something should be done and what do you think or you in your experience what has been working and what has not we can also talk about the the bad examples okay so we, we, we might start with karima yeah. Thank you. So uh, I will, yeah, I would like to respond to this question. Um, take into account uh, and the action, uh, particularly in action in France, and the action undertaken by the uh, association Fam uh, et Science, and also an initiative called What Zero Six Women Hackers Action Tank. And um, so I will just focus on six main actions. The first one is really to train 
teachers, so teachers from primary uh, and secondary and high schools, because really important, these people are the closest people to the, uh, to the girls, so it is really important to train them. And the Women in Science Association in France, uh, since 2020, is organizing a webinar and the, to, to this uh, teacher, and this webinar is now part of the um, teaching training uh, official teaching training uh, plan of the teacher. The second action is uh, probably to propose specific scholarship for female students at license and master level. And I, I think if I'm right, uh, the uh, Paris Sackley University is discussing this kind of scholarship for the uh, next uh, academic year. Uh, the third thing is really to increase the number of, um, uh, how we say, um, si uh, um, digital challenges such as uh, cybersecurity challenges, uh, coding challenges, days and nights, but also this event that are dedicated to girls so I, I don't know who was talking about the girls. I, I think you, I don't know, somebody was talking about the girls, uh, they tech that are organized um, around the world. And in, in, in this region, there is a what 06 is organ, has organized the first one two years ago. And it was a really successful event because we had like a, um, more than 20 mothers coming from the working um, class bringing their daughters and we had also an interesting feedback from a father who said after this event his daughter wanted really to choose uh, tech studies and uh, they, I'm working with a company, uh, a cybersecurity company uh, called Fortinet, and Fortinet is also organizing some uh, cybersecurity challenges at primary school. And, in, uh, and also, I, just to come back to the Girls Day Tech, I organized a cybersecurity uh, workshop, was very uh, successful with these girls. Um, the um, uh, the uh, uh, fourth um, um, action is mentoring. And for mentoring, I would like just to underline that it's important to have two kinds of mentoring. A mentoring uh, with uh, professional women who mentor uh, high school, uh, high school students, but also students from university and engineering school, but also having mentoring with uh, students from uh, university engineering school mentoring uh, students from high school and secondary schools. I think this is really important. And Family Science Association has uh, created um, a special uh, mentoring program, the first mentoring program at universities dedicated to a PhD student. And now it's really successful and we have like uh, more than 11 university in, universities in France having a partnership with the, uh, with this, uh, with Family Science. Uh, there is also role models, but I think Isabel will uh, really talk about it and will explain it more of um, this, uh, this action. And finally, I would like to focus also on specific tech prices for girls um, um, in high and secondary school. I think it's really important for these girls that choose uh, tech studies just to, to like make them more confident and to, you know, to, to push them. And also specific prices for uh, women working at the, in tech domain. Uh, and also what 06, for example, has created a Women in Tech Trophy in 2019. And this was really great. And I, I saw that the people who, uh, the women who had the prices they ha became more visible and it increased their self-confidence and so on. So I think, yeah, this, for, what I would like to share, um, maybe. Thank you very much. Isabel? I would like to challenge two beliefs about um, action, affirmative action. So first one is we have to act very early because with children, stereotypes are not known or not well known. Uh, first, it's, it's a mistake because at the age of five, children are as competent as adults about stereotype. But even if it's too late for stereotype, of course, it's a good idea to teach code, uh, to teach how to code at elementary school, and usually girls and boys, but girls are very enthusiastic. But it's easy at that age, because there's nothing at stake. I mean, uh, orientation decisions are far away, and IT does not threaten their femininity. They are still young. But 
at teenage, it's something more difficult. But this is where it is important. Because at teenage, girls tend to avoid um, mathematics or IT because first boys say it's for us, it's our territory. And they are afraid that they will not look like, look enough feminine. And uh, they tend to draw to more stereotype uh, orientation. But uh, it's really the moment that we have to convince girls and boys that computer science is a discipline for both. If we don't address boys too, they will continue to say it's our field. And we need to, uh, cr um, to consolidate the interest uh, of the girl who want to make this choice because it's at this moment we, we maybe lose them. And the other belief is about role model. Sometimes we hear role model is very important, is the only things we have to do because um, first it's easy, it's cheap, and we have many, uh, many inspiring women. So yes, it is important to highlight inspiring women, but it's important to highlight every woman in IT. You, me, and not only the CEO of Facebook, for example. It's quite difficult for a young girl to imagine that later she could be CEO of Facebook, but it's probably more easy to imagine that she can be you, or me, or you, Barbara. And so um, the other thing it's absolutely important is to remember it's not only we need to attract women in high school, in uh, higher education, but we need to retain them. Because unfortunately, sometimes they begin, but they don't finish uh, their diploma. And the first thing we have to do to retain them, they need to feel safe. And if we don't fight against uh, sexual harassment, sexism every day, the women don't feel safe and they leave. So it's useless to address women, to attract women to this uh, field if we can't guarantee they're going to be safe. And we have to, to fight against the sexual har harassment without hesitation in high school, in higher education, and of course, in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bara or Marta, whoever wants to start. Marta? Okay, thank you. Uh, I think most of the actions uh, were already said, uh, so I can only add how do we see it from the government point of view, where we think it's now very important, uh, because where do we lack? It's, uh, for example, career counseling. So we need to focus on a better career counseling, the school psychologists, the school uh, career counselor. Uh, that's. Uh, we don't have a long history of these professions within the schools uh, in, uh, in Czechia. And uh, I don't know if you remember when you were in school and there was your career council, I remember, and it was horrible. And I, I, I hope that uh, our strategy, also the school inspection sees it and they act uh, together with the National Pedagogical Institute uh, in terms of better up the career counseling. But that's long term, where do we lack and we need to do it better. We need to uh, make uh, seminars for the counselors. We need to do more uh, met methodological books and, and stuff like this, but also we need to educate the teachers themselves, either way on the pedagogical faculties, uh, and now actually the universities can apply for, for grant from the operational programs in order to change their curriculum uh, to put gender equality more in their curricula in the universities for uh, which preparates uh, the teachers, which is uh, because usually there is not enough funding to do anything. But now there's EU funding. There's also governmental funding. So uh, this is, uh, I hope uh, that the teachers also will do some uh, seminars more because like now 
there are National Pedagogical Institute, there are some, uh, some seminars on gender equality, but the teachers, they don't have much time in order to, to take them. And what is one seminar if you watch one video, two videos, nothing happens. We need to start at where do we do educate the teachers, therefore they uh, are not stereotypical and they actually motivate girls and boys in what they want to be and they need it to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Barbara, is the check it as a, a right way to go? Uh, absolutely. Like, I think that uh, any anyone, but it's like m most of the courses are uh, in, in Czech language. Uh, but yes, I believe that a good portion of, of uh, people in, in the audience. So if you wanted to try like a fresh start with technology, uh, Czechitas is definitely like a way, way to go. Um, if I should like from the effective measures that the whole technology field can do to actually open the door to diversity, if I choose, if I shall choose one and only, I would say let's start appreciating diverse talent. Because what we do nowadays is that we rank talents to the first class citizens and the second class citizens. And often, unfortunately, people who come in technology, they tend to believe that their success is linked to their ability to mimic the strengths of the majority that is now uh, populating the technology. And that is being very single discipline, being, being very targeted towards the problem and not the context of the problem. I believe that we would win much more if we actually started appreciating people who bring different view, who bring views of the context of the problem and starting to give this talent the same value than we actually now are able to, to do. Uh, only if people who come to technology with a new views uh, will feel appreciated, they will stay and they will motivate others to actually join as well. So I believe really like now, nowadays technology is under talented because people who join it are trying to mimic that one talent uh, that is quite narrow, uh, honestly. Uh, so let's just keep extending it because only that way we can fit technology to benefit the society uh, and help us with the problems we are dealing with like on a global basis. So making our uh, planet uh, and, and, and life on the planet more, more, more sustainable actually for, for everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, fantastic. If I uh, see well on uh, Isabel's uh, watch, I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it's it's 15, 15. We have 15 minutes, so I don't have my watch. So we can take some comments and questions from the audience, if uh, because I have seen some faces who are enthusiastic to ask or add something. So the the chance is yours. Fantastic, and we will please we will ask the our. Um, oh, I can be the assistant. Okay, thank you very much. To use the microphone. So first, first of all, I, I would like to thank you for a very interesting uh, discussion, and I would like to ask you all, uh, when, if you remember, like uh, when you decided actually to join, you know, like the science world, and uh, what was the motivation, and that you were not the part of the majority who just uh, drop off later, it would be interesting for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Marta. Won't you start? Well. Uh I study sociology, so I'm a, I'm social scientist. So uh, that question is probably not for me. I know. I am a social scientist as well. I'm sorry. I study sociology. It's same department. We discovered that before. So, <laughs> Isabel, the floor is yours. <laughs> uh, my father told me how to program. I was 14, and then I didn't realize it was uh, a boy's occupation, and I didn't realize it till. I think till I was looking for a job. Okay, I didn't look very well around me, but I was absolutely sure because I can do it, everybody can do it, and I was good in IT, so I didn't ask myself any question at all. My first question happened when I was looking for a job, 
and uh, nobody hired me. It was not the situation we have now, of course. Now I would find a job. And I realized that people, the employers, were afraid I could have many children. I will take care exclusively. So I was not the first choice. But when I was a teenager, I was a geek. And I did not know that maybe IT was not for me. And it protected me all the way uh, till the bachelor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Karima, what is yeah, your motivation? My experience yeah, is really different because uh, I really loved mathematics when I was doing my studies. And when I finished, I had my baccalaureate, I really wanted to be, uh, I mean, it was like a dream since I was young, to be a pilot as my father uh, was pilot in the army. So, but anyway, it was not really easy for women at that time to be pilot in the army. So I, w I decided maybe to do it in the civil, I mean, to be a civil pilot. But then in Argia at that time, it was exclusive for men. Women could not be pilot. Uh, now things ha have changed. So I was really disappointed. You know, I had my baccalaureate, very happy. And then I was, oh, I don't know what, to, what I would do because my, my dream now dropped down. So I said, okay, I love psychology. So I would do psychology studies. And then I discussed that with my grandmother, uh, the mom of my mom. And she said, oh, no, psychology is, uh, I mean, yeah, you can do this just by yourself, you know, just, you know, learn and read things. Uh, but I think, you know, informatics is a right domain and the domain of the future. So you should go there. And I went with her, we went to the uh, informatics engineering school in informatics in, uh, at Algiers. It was the best one in Algeria. So we went together to discuss with the director and she wanted really to convince me to do that. And I joined that informatics school and then I stayed in informatics. But you know, when I had my PhD in, um, in computer science, uh, it was in, in cybersecurity, of course, uh, detecting attacks in a network. But I said, okay, I finished this PhD and then I will start another one in to understand the psychology of the hackers. <laughs> and, uh, I didn't do it because then things went very, very quickly. But anyway, so I, I, don't, I, I started the informatics studies thanks to my grandmother. And I can say thank you, grandmother, for <laughs> having, you know, be, I mean, giving me a, a very good advice. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Barbara? So, so for me, again, like a very, very different journey. Uh, so what's worth to say is that uh, none of my family members had university, had studied university. So uh, none of my parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, etc. Like nobody in the family. And that was a great thing because then I was thinking, okay, I can actually then go and try anything because if they just like lay me off, uh, then uh, nobody cares. You know, like I, I don't feel any commitment to finish university if like I would be the first in the family anyway. So I was thinking, okay, so what, what shall I try? You know, and I could try anything. Um, I was, uh, I also liked mathematics. Like I found mathematics like beautiful uh, because I, I like when things are beautiful <laughs> and mathematics is beautiful. Um, so uh, I, I, I applied to three universities which had like mathematics, uh, like the entrance exam for mathematics. So uh, I, I found three, I, I didn't really prioritize. So it was economics, it was the mathematics and physics, and it was uh, the computer science. I didn't know like anything about any of these. And uh, I got accepted to computer science without the entrance exam. So I actually didn't come to the other entrance exams. And, and only like when I, when I found myself in the classroom, I, 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 I realized like what computer science is about. I, I didn't know until that like moment of sitting in, in the lecture room. So uh, I'm actually enormously uh, happy that this happened because I love computer science. I, I love, again, like the beauty of it. I'm a software architect. I, I love the beauty of software architecture, which can be very elegant and very beautiful um, if you do it right. Uh, and and that's, that's why I think we should have more architects because now, nowadays we lack uh, architecture, uh, like the, the true invisible architecture of the software systems we are building. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's my, my journey. That's my journey. Thank you very much. Uh, before I give a floor to, to another one, just I have to admit that I also started studying at the Faculty of Applied Sciences in Pilsen. I, I wanted to do, and then they asked me, you know, I, I was in the first class, 200 people, and 
up to 10, if I remember, were my female schoolmates, up to 10, maximum, maybe seven at the 1990. I'm talking about 1990. And they told us, look left, look right. And remember, you don't have to remember these faces because 50 of you will not be here in next three months. And I, I liked one girl and then I stayed for another half a year because of this girl. And then they asked me, what would you like to do? I, I would like to be a director of a culture center. So go study sociology because this is your way. And I went to study sociology. So it's another story. I'm sorry for that. So please, the, the, we have another question right here. Uh, do, uh, we have the microphone. Yes. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, my question is mainly addressed to Barbara, Karima, and uh, Isabel. Uh, I was wondering if within your university you, s you see good practices that usually like promote such like good environment, prevent the stereotypes, and also like provide like this uh, safety uh, for women. So I was wondering if you have like good example that could be also promoted to the workplace uh, later on. Mm -hmm. So you can. Barbara, you can start. Uh, okay, I can start very quickly. Uh, so actually, uh, together with Karima within the EU Gain framework, we are trying to collect these best practices across European institutions and uh, have a booklet on them. So it's it's pos it's available on the website. And then also like uh, organize an award for institutions uh, that have good practices so that we actually learn about them. So that they nominate and we can learn about them. What is interesting about these good practices uh, for encouraging and increasing the representation of girls in the computer science programs? What is very interesting is that actually the schools that are very successful with that did not change the actual study content, but they created environment around it. So things that are mostly fighting that confidence gap, for example, so like helping uh, students to get to conferences where they can see the role models, etc. Like things really creating a rather, I would say, more, more like a safety net around the study programs rather than changing the actual learning content. Mm -hmm. Karima, some good examples? Yeah, I, I, I will just take an example, in, not in, in my university, but in, um, in um, Britain, region of France. So there are some um, um, collaboration between uh, university and engineering. Um, I would take one example of a, an engineering school in Britain who have um, increased the number of students in informatics thanks to three actions. The first one was inviting women computer scientists during the informatics days and also um, uh, organizing like a collaboration between student engineering school students who were going to uh, to, uh, to uh, how say high school uh, high schools to uh, to uh, mm, how say them organize like uh, workshops coding workshops and so on and and th these three actions have shown really concrete results. Uh, uh, mm, regarding the, no, incre the increasing the number of students following informatics, so I would just keep with it. There are many of, uh, of uh, many other examples. We can discuss them at the coffee break if you want, because we are think, uh, really strict with the time. But I would just give the floor to Isabel to speak one other one. Okay, some examples from University of Geneva. One, uh, one example from the University of Geneva. Um, is about sexual harassment and sexism at the university. We had we had some affairs, and um, to to tackle this this issue, we made a very big advertisement with posters everywhere in the university, with example of sentences. We heard women heard about their situation at the university. Some sometimes it's just sexism, sometimes it's harassment. And uh, sometimes it's uh, a mix of racism or homophobia, things like that. And uh, after this campaign, we have many discussions at the university. And of course, some men feel ill at ease. Uh, they say, we, uh, we were not like that, uh, not all men, you know. And uh, it's, it's not a good idea to have this poster everywhere because we feel like we are guilty and we are not. But anyway, Yes, I know some men will are uncomfortable, but we speak about it. And then f uh, four, five years ago, we now have a policy at the University of Geneva and it's not a discussion anymore. I don't mean there are not harassment anymore or there are no sexism anymore, but thanks to this campaign, 
we have uh, a text, uh, an official text from the uh, the dean, uh, and we cannot say it don't ex it doesn't exist, and there are nothing to do with it. And uh, yes, of course, not all men, but this is not the point. Okay, so maybe we are approaching the end. So maybe Marta, you will start, and you also very shortly say something which you wanted to say and haven't said yet some some idea you wanted Actually, to say. Actually, I wanted to add to this uh, to this question because uh, what I think it's also very good, even though it's not only in the tech uh, tech schools, it's uh, the ombuds ombudspersons, and actually within the uh, governmental council for gender equality, we are. Um, telling to uh, Ministry of School and Education uh, to make for for universities um, that uh, they are supposed to have the ombudspersons because uh, recently there was uh, quite few stories about sexual harassment and uh, and they are actually historical like now we are we see something which happened to uh, like 20 years ago and it's been happening since. And since we have these ombudspersons, actually people are starting to come up with what ha what was happening because it's not just a box somewhere where you can put uh, what happened to you and maybe someone will open it, maybe maybe won't. It's written in the school stat uh, status or the program like that there is this box, but uh, if there is another person and you don't know that somebody will take care and you trust this person, then uh, we will not move forward. And that's, uh, yeah, maybe I'll finish there even though it was a question I wasn't asked to answer. <laughs> uh, fine, but you still have a chance to have a one sentence still to add what you haven't said, what you have in your mind. No, I think no, no. thank you very much. <laughs> Isabel? I think I said pretty much everything I wanted to say. So Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, add uh, one sentence to conclude. Um, from my, my point of view, uh, I think it's really important to have like a, a close and strong collaboration and partnership between education, but when I talk about education, is um, primary, uh, secondary, high school, and higher education, and also collaboration. So between the different levels of education, but then with education, industry, association, I would say mainly women association, because mostly of women associations are really uh, uh, taking care about this, this, uh, this gender problem. And also uh, parents, because parents are also very close to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the girls and they have an influence on the choice of the girls. And finally, I think it's really important to bring and to include more men in this, uh, in, in this volunteer, action. I volunteer. Yeah, because I think this is what we are really m missing, and we really need to find a way how to include all these people in, in the debate. And also, I would like to say that now in France we are seeing many local initiatives. So the question now is how to. Uh, this local initiative has shown that the collaboration between the different institutions I'm talking about, of, of the different stakeholders, show that we can have successful results. So now how we can take this local action and make them more scalable at the national level. And that's, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Bara, your sentence. Uh, it's actually about really seeing technology as like open to everybody. Uh, for those who are in tech, uh, to really feel that they are the ones that we should like keep pulling people in. And then actually putting them to a visible place whenever they bring something different from what is the status quo currently. Because I believe that the risk of biases we have is that we tend to see the potential of people based on how they match those who are the successful ones. So until we will actually see more diversity among those who would put, put up as the successful ones that we celebrate, we will not really be able to even see the potential in ourselves if we are just entering. So be more authentic about what are your differences if you are the successful one, make your differences more visible, uh, even if they might make you very different from what is now celebrated, because then other people who are just entering can have a way to identify with somebody who made it to the top. 
Great. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be with you. Marta, Isabel, Karima, Barbara. <laughs>